The first images of women walking. This was the moment the female suicide bomber entered the police station in Istanbul before blowing herself up. An attack that put Turkey on high alert. The leftist Revolutionary People's Liberation Party front claimed responsibility for the attack, calling it an act of sacrifice. They say they want to fight corruption and aim to bring to account President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's AK party, after a Monday ruling said that four former ministers accused of graft wouldn't stand trial. The female suicide bomber entered the police station saying in English that she had lost her purse before blowing herself up inside the three-story building. One police officer was killed and another injured. Turkish Prime Minister Ahmed Davutoglu described the attacker as a terrorist, saying investigations into what happened would be carried out. The most comprehensive investigation will be carried out regarding the attack that was carried out in the heart of Istanbul and when the links to an organization are found, further steps will be taken. The attack briefly shut down public transport around the historic Sultan Ahmed Square, a popular tourist destination visited by thousands of people every day. The strike is the second against police in less than a week. Five days earlier, Istanbul witnessed a grenade attack on police near the prime minister's office, which the leftist group also claimed to be responsible for. The banned Marxist group has since cautioned of further attacks. But after last night's attack here in the heart of Istanbul, Turkey is ramping up security measures in an effort to prevent further attacks. Yes, indeed, Turkey will need to ramp up security after these latest incidents discuss it. Further, we're joined by Dr. Janroj Kelez, a political analyst from London over the phone. Uh, Dr. Janroj, thank you very much for joining the bulletin. Firstly, how serious was yesterday's suicide attack and what threat does the leftist revolutionary People's Liberation Party front actually pose? I think this is the second attack in one week. Uh, as you might rem uh, know, last week the same group attempted to attack officer, officers outside Dolmabahce uh, Palace, the Prime Minister office in Istanbul. Fortunately, the attack was unsuccessful and no one was injured. And the security issue is, of course, uh, in Turkey is uh, one subject that is uh, uh, is a permanent crisis in Turkey. The security issues because of the uh, conflicts uh, in the Kurdish region, but also because of the conflict with different groups in in Istanbul. Uh, this group uh, has uh, launched several attacks uh, since 80s. Uh, and is, is uh, some uh, there are some suspicious news about these groups also there was some conflict between between these groups and left oriented uh, progressive uh, groups in in Gazi and Nurtepe uh, neighborhood in Istanbul and the groups uh, is out of the, and accepted as a terrorist organization by Turkey uh, Europe and US and uh, of course uh, we understand the group's uh, attempts to ma uh, to make uh, um, to ma uh, create a public space for, uh, for itself, and it is, as I said, it's a second attack. But I should say that such a such a blind uh, violence and deadly attacks can only help the ruling party to continue its hegemonic domination over society. AKP government will use such attacks claim that the AKP government is needed uh, for economic and political stability in Turkey. Uh, I mean, the suicide bombings is linked to the grenade attack at, at police last week in Istanbul. Uh, is this a sign um, of, of worse days to come and possibly an escalation in the violence? And the group is not so big group, really. I mean, they are usually uh, carrying out such uh, small uh, attacks, mainly to the, uh, to the security forces. Uh, or st police stations. Uh, I don't think we'll create such a huge uh, security issues. But as I mentioned, that uh, that um, they, they it seems they will continue with their attacks uh, after after Dolmabahce. Now in in uh, in Sultan Ahmed, 
uh, it is unclear whether they will uh, continue with this or not. But uh, as I say, this group ha has launched uh, since 80s and have uh, carried has carried such a attacks. Just to focus, uh, just to focus sometimes, on. Sometimes they stop, but, but sometimes they continue taking. Mm, I mean, just to focus on this group, Doctor Jan Raj, um, yeah. they, they usually get their point across through assassinations. Um, now they're employing suicide uh, suicide bombings. What's behind the change in these tactics? Oh, I think the, the, my, my, you, you're right. They, 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 until now, they, uh, they didn't carry out such a uh, um, suicide bombers. Uh, I assume this is a bit desperation uh, one way. And another way, in the Middle East, the suicide the, um, it became fashionable uh, attacks uh, the, the way uh, they are doing now, the suicide bombers. In many, as you know, in many uh, Middle East countries, if you widely use such an action. Yeah, how will and, uh, and can the Turkish authorities deal with this group, Dr. Janraj? I mean, we know they are already outlawed. I think um, what I understand from the Prime Minister, he, is, uh, he said he will, uh, inv the authorities will investigate this. But it is, it is impossible to deal with such issues. Uh, it is not the uh, not issues only related to Turkey. In many countries, it is difficult to, to deal with the suicide bombers. Uh, 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 therefore, it is a difficult, difficult situation, I think. Okay, we're just going to have to leave it there. Dr. Janroj uh, Kellez, a political analyst, joins us from London over the phone. Thank you very much for your time.